Okay, good morning and welcome back everyone to our Tuesday morning market outlook session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And we are heading into a market that is largely very complacent. Uh, we have had trends that have effectively been in place for the past month and a half, ever since the coronavirus vaccine news came out. And we want to explore a little bit as far as where we currently sit, because trends are very clear. But how do we actually take that into our trading and our outlook going forward? That's what I want to take some time and explore during our session today. Now, before we get started, what we're going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So we'll start off today with, uh, before we do our normal market update, I'm going to talk a little bit about valuation first. Um, a lot of investors have been concerned about the current, where the current market sits from a valuations perspective, so I do want to give it a quick update there. Then we'll take a look at the major indices, where they currently sit, what trends we have seen emerge from them, uh, and also taking a look at rates and commodities, where we've seen a lot of extreme moves from the dollar, from treasuries, and this has ramifications for whether you're trading equities, whether you're trading commodities or ETFs, and then we'll take a look at the sectors that are currently on the move as a result of the rates move that we're currently seeing, share with you a few ideas here at the end, and if we have a few minutes, answer your questions here at the very end. But the primary question that I want to help investors answer today is really, has the market reached a complacent level that typically signals a market top? Now, those are some of the, I would say, trickier parts of answering where the current market currently sits and our expectations. So I want to try to frame that in a way that's helpful for investors, regardless of whether you're a short-term or long-term investor. So my name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today, what I want to share with you are my charts that I'm currently viewing to inform form my uh, directional opinion, uh, the economic research, and the ideas that we currently have here in the equity markets. Now, normally we start these sessions by taking a look at charts like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, to understand where the broader market sits. But before we take a look at that, I do want to point us at some equity valuations, because we are approaching some levels that we had not seen since the 2000 levels. If we look at the 12-month forward PE level of the S&P 500, we're back towards uh, the dot-com levels that we had saw above 23 or so on the S&P 500. This is concerning for many investors that obviously saw the tumble of the dot-com boom, where it went from about trading at about 22, 23 times earnings all the way up to as high as 24 and a half, down to the roughly long-term average, which is just under 15. That would obviously be a huge multiple contraction that would lead to a fairly substantial um, lower equity valuations. And, you know, not just from an evaluations perspective, but the number, uh, but the, um, the, the size of companies, if you will, that currently, uh, number one, tech sector is now a very dominant sector of the S&P 500. Um, and when you put that into account for the fact that uh, over a trillion dollars in terms of market cap, um, a, a trillion dollars in market cap of technology firms have negative earnings, meaning they actually lose money rather, or, or another way of putting this, there are a trillion dollars in market cap of technology companies that are not profitable. Now, the one thing I will say that has changed substantially from now, uh, from the dot-com boom, is that during the dot-com boom, you had a lot of um, companies that had market cap that were not only not generating any uh, uh, profitability, but they also were not generating any earnings. And there is a distinct difference between the dot-com boom that we saw during 1999 and 2000 versus the technology boom that we're seeing today. So those are the two primary differences. But I, I think a lot of investors will ask the question, well, you know, is an unprofitable technology firm still uh, worth investing in, meaning is there value in, in, in an unprofitable technology firm? That's the primary question that I think that has that we need to answer for this particular technology boom that we're currently in. But if we look at valuations perspective, price to sales, this is really where we have seen some extreme moves in price to sales in S&P 500 stocks, especially if you look at um, companies like Tesla that are trading at 20, 25 times sales. You know, these are very, very mature. These are relatively mature companies 
compared to the companies that we usually see this type of extreme valuation uh, are much earlier stage, much smaller companies, but we are seeing much, much larger companies now, you know, anywhere from the 20 to $200 billion range that are trading at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, even 60 times sales. You know, these are valuations that we have never seen before. Um, price to book ratio, not extreme as, as 2000, but certainly uh, getting up there. Um, above one standard deviation just recently. Uh, the price to sales above two standard deviations right now that we're currently seeing. But the one thing I still want to point out to investors is that two things. Number one, when valuations get to extreme levels, they can stay extreme for fairly long periods of time, right? So when it exceeds that first one standard deviation, just because it exceeds it does not mean that it has to come back down. It can actually continue to get more extreme and stay extreme for quite a bit of time. So we're still in, you know, some could argue in the early stages of this new extreme valuation move, which means that we can still continue to move higher and actually spend some time there before you actually have that uh, that contraction if you will in in um in, in valuations so as a trader you know if you're a short-term trader these valuation extremes are, may not be as concerning to you because you don't plan on holding on to stocks for very long and if you're a very very long-term investor perhaps these short-term uh, extreme valuations don't concern you because your time horizon is longer. But in the intermediate term, those are the investors that should be a little concerned about continuing to buy stocks at these valuations. Um, but so be very careful as to how you use this. Don't just simply look at valuations and say, oh, it's time to short the markets because valuations are at extremes. That in itself usually does not work out very well for most investors because again, because of exactly what I just said. Valuations can stay extreme for fairly long periods of time and actually continue to expand and get even more uh, extreme, if you will, compared to what we have seen in history. And it is quite different from what we saw in 2000, and, uh, from 1999 and 2000. So let's look at the major indices so far. The S&P 500 uptrend is still intact here. We have pretty much spent two almost two and a half months of the s p 500 above its 21 day moving average with no pullbacks to below the 21 day moving average with the exception of the first day of trading of this year where it should just barely touch the 21 day moving average and continue to move higher here um this really reminds us of multiple periods of this that we saw right before the september sell-off and what we saw from jan from basically november to february of last year we saw this type of complacency, if you will. We're seeing in the S&P 500, we're seeing in the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, as you can see, spent the same amount of time uh, above its 20 day, 21 day moving average. So getting more and more complacent. And some investors are seeing this as an potential for a short-term pullback here in the broader markets. We're also seeing it in IWM, small caps, even more extreme move here to the upside without any pullbacks below the 21 day moving average. We're now approaching levels that we would say um, are, are at risk of a short term pullback here from, you know, the major market indices. So that's how I'm currently viewing the major markets. When we look at value versus growth, we still continue to see the slow rotation from value into growth. As you can see, value has underperformed growth for a long period of time. This is a weekly chart here on the left hand side. And that has now started to um, move a little bit higher off those lows. We're now making higher lows, um, not quite ma yet making higher highs, but we are uh, at this point testing the 200 day moving average and potentially breaking out from that level so those are some of the things that we're paying attention to here from a, from a from an equities perspective is how we're seeing this rotation perhaps out of the 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 big cap names into small the smaller cap names into value versus growth now Emerging markets, another one in extreme positioning. So it's not just U.S. equities. It's emerging markets, um, international equities, EEM, also trading near the, the same extreme values here. And the question is whether you know, markets are due for a short-term pullback here. Now, when we look at volatility, typically when we see markets near tops, um, they tend to correspond with lows in volatility as we but you know as you can see here in september prior to the september sell-off 
we had a rise in volatility before it spiked. We're starting to see that again, you know, a rise in volatility going into uh, all time highs. And is there a potential for another move up higher here on volatility? That is the primary question that we're paying attention to. Now, the one thing that also has been moving quite a bit from an extreme perspective is rates. Rates have moved from um, our, first of all, we had a 100 basis point target at the end of the year. That's exactly where we effectively ended the year. Now we've moved up all the way to 117 basis points on the 10 year yield. That is a pretty sizable move here from what we saw here back in about 50 basis points here in August, now to 117 basis points. So this is going to put some constraints in my opinion on equities because for, for all intensive purposes, um, equities was relatively inexpensive compared to treasury yield because the S&P 500 dividend yield was roughly uh, you know, four four to five times what the 10-year was offering in terms of S&P yields. But when Treasury yields now rises to 117 basis points, the S&P 500 dividend yield is less than double what the 10-year yield is currently offering. So we're moving from 4x to 2x or under 2x in terms of S&P 500 yield. This is making equity yields look far less attractive. And that usually can also put a bit of a damper here on equity rallies here going forward. So these are all things that we're starting to see emerge from the current market that is a little bit concerning as to placing new fresh long positions in the equity markets, as opposed to perhaps waiting for a bit of a pullback here. Now, because of what we're currently seeing in terms of uh, optimism around the vaccine, uh, corporate earnings continuing to be fairly strong and guiding, str guiding higher here. We don't believe that it's time to short the equity markets, but rather be patient, wait for a pullback, and use those opportunities as, an, uh, as, a, as a way to enter equities rather than short shorting equities. Now, the big question I think on a lot of investors' mindset is really this short dollar trade. This is right now a very crowded trade. Um, a lot of investors are short the dollar through different vehicles, whether you're short the dollar directly through an ETF like, like UUP, whether you're short uh, TLT, whether you are um, long commodities, uh, silver, gold, any of these are ways to play a short dollar. And the question is really, you know, the quick move that we've seen here, is that a, is that a sign that dollar is going to start recovering or is that a, just another opportunity to short the markets? Now, a lot of investors are currently still in the camp that uh, a rally here in the dollar is an opportunity to short. Now, that could potentially put a short squeeze here and rally and have the, see the dollar rally here. That's another, um, I would say, risk here of a short-term pullback or a, a pent temporary pause here to equity markets um, due to the uh, a rally that we might see here in the dollar. As you can see here on the weekly chart, the dollar has not had any time above the 21 week moving average for a long time. And it could just at the very minimum reverse back to trend at about the 92 level here. So a rally up to 92 would likely see a little bit of a pullback here from equities as well. So when we look at dollar, you know, the, the decline in dollar has caused a sharp rally in a lot of commodities, including oil. Oil uh, actually moving up substantially higher above our $42 resistance level, now reaching the $53 uh, 20 week moving, I'm sorry, 200 week moving average here. So I expect to see a little bit of a pause here around this 53. See if it does break above 53. If it breaks above 53, you know, we're really seeing oil head into the 60s potentially to the upside over the long long run. So crude, also a potential mover here as dollar continues to fall, we're seeing these commodities start to rise to new levels here. So one that we're paying attention to here is gold. Gold so far is holding this 200-day moving average here, uh, making higher, high, higher lows and potentially seeing a bounce opportunity here, especially for those playing for a continuation in short the dollar, looking for an opportunity to go long gold here. 
if we look at the sectors, uh, communications. Uh, communications is starting to uh, slow down here in terms of momentum, as you can see, as it moves sideways, relative strength is actually declining here. So we're starting to see momentum slow down here for communications. We've seen technology shares and communication shares start to underperform the broader markets. This is, um, this is a bit of a warning sign for us also as to the strength and momentum of the current markets, because these are the strong sectors that we're leading the markets higher here. Those are starting to slow down. We're starting to see this rotation out of the, the strong sectors into the weaker sectors like XLF. XLF back at this $31 double top here, which is the highs from the February 2020 before the, the pandemic. We're back at those highs. The question is looking whether we're going to see a breakout here to the upside. When we look at the 10-year yields, this is really where we believe that XLF or some of the banking names has the um, the potential to break out higher above this $31 level and continue moving higher here going forward. On the flip side with the rise in treasury yields, this is making the two, uh, two sectors that generate a high amount of yield, utilities and real estate look far more and more um, less attractive or uh, more, um, yeah, less attractive. And if we look at the rise in treasury yields, this is causing not only the real estate uh, sector, which is predominantly a yield driving sector. Um, and when you incorporate the fundamentals of real estate looking weaker and weaker, this is really one of the segments of the market that's really starting to fall apart here. So as equities are at least uh, grinding their way higher, Real estate stocks are continuing to grind its way lower here. It's about to test its 200-day moving average here and potentially breaking down to the downside here. As you can see, we have support here around $34. That would be my initial targets here to the downside. So when you have uh, strong sectors like technology, communications starting to pull back, you have weak sectors starting to fall apart here. This is another you know, case, if you will, for a potential pause here in equities in the broader markets going forward and seeing some of this rec sector rotation that we're starting to play out here. And then weak sectors like industri and, and like energy, as we saw in the crude pricing, breaking out to the higher, to the upside, potentially about to break out from a double top here. As you can see, this is a long-term supporter resistance level, um, uh, this 42, uh, 42 and a half level long-term support or resistance. And we have this small double top here, potential breakout here. XLE, if we break out, likely heading up to this $52 level here to the upside. So um, we're starting to see these smaller, weaker sectors come back to life. We're starting to see the dominant, strong sectors um, starting to fall back a little bit. So this is the rotation that we're starting to see in the broader markets and some concerns that we have for uh, the continuation higher here for equities in the short run. So looking at some of the ideas that we have. So we, show, we showed you how the 10-year the yields have started to rise substantially. This has is, this is led to um, a rally here in financials, not only because of the, steep, uh, the rate curve steepening, but also just higher yields will generate a, a higher amount of interest for banks. And we have a lot of banks that have recently broke out here. And this, this category is pretty broad. Whether you look at Citigroup, whether you look at JP Morgan, um, Goldman Sachs, these are all potential ways to play for the upside. But the one thing I want to point out here is Citigroup recently just broke out above the 200 week moving average here on the left-hand chart. So this, this gives me, in my opinion, a view into the longer term outlook here for uh, Citigroup, which has, in my opinion, a fair amount of upside potential here, looking at a, a stock like Citigroup into the low 80s, recently just breaking out above the $60 resistance level, forming this small consolidation range and has the potential, in my opinion, to continue moving higher here, looking at Citigroup. So that's the first idea that I wanted to show, share with you. The second one is General Motors. So for those of you that have been following me for a while, I've been talking about General Motors. I've been talking about the shift in terms of electric vehicles. And out of the big three automakers, General Motors is the one, in my opinion, that has the most laser focus on electric vehicles. 
that has been consolidating their business to be a stronger business from a fundamental and balance sheet perspective and has made the largest investment out of the, th the big three in terms of turning into a fully electric car company in the next five years. So for those reasons, GM trading at half um, GM is currently from a valuations perspective trading at zero and a ha um, half of sales, if you will, from a valuation perspective. And just to put that into perspective, stocks like Tesla are trading at 30 times sales. Stocks like Neo are trading at 40 times sales. Stocks, smaller stocks like Xping and LI are trading at 50 to 60 times sales, while General Motors is trading at half time sales. So we're talking about valuations that are anywhere from um, 60 to 120 times cheaper from a valuations perspective. Obviously very different companies. It's hard to compare a Chinese electric car startup versus GM, a well-established um, player in the internal combustion engine space. But it just shows you how big of a valuation gap we currently have between a stock like General Motors that has the same vision, but the scale to, to become very big in the electric vehicle space versus what some of these startups are currently trading from a valuations perspective. And I think that the market needs to have a bit of a consolidation or a repricing of some of these stocks. So GM trading at half time sales, uh, in my opinion, if you're a long term investor, the fact that we are just at this $45 level, which is a long term resistance level and potentially breaking out here to the upside, that is, in my opinion, a long term opportunity here for GM. And lastly, Marvell chips. Um, semiconductors continue to remain one of the strongest segments of the markets. Marvell chips actually produces um, some ch chips for the automakers and on a clear uptrend here, recently breaking out above this $50 level here to the upside. And also in my opinion, has some relative strength and opportunities here to the upside here for some of the chip makers like Marvell. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a sense for where my head currently is with respect to equity markets, with respect to valuations. A lot of investors have been asking me over the past few weeks about you know what, my con what concerns I have about valuations, and I certainly think that your concerns are absolutely valid. But just again, remember, it really depends on whether you're a short-term or long-term investor as to whether valuations um, or how much valuations matter to you. And just because valuations are at extremes compared to history does not mean that they can't continue to actually be more extreme and stay elevated for quite some time before they correct lower. So if anything, I would be looking for a short-term pullback just because markets at this point seem a little complacent um, has the opportunity of perhaps three, five, seven percent pullback. Those are the types of pullbacks that I would be looking for or be concerned about based on current about, based on current market um, positioning. I wouldn't be too concerned about the 20, 30, 40 percent pullbacks that some investors may be concerned about from a value, you know, if you're concerned that valuations are going to pull back to more normal levels. I simply do not see that happening here in the short run, at least in Q1 of 2021. So that just gives you a sense of where my currently head is at and how I'm viewing the markets. Again, I hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding. And I will see you guys here next week on our next options education session. So thank you so much. Have a great trading day and I'll see you guys next week.